Hello, David Lemon here. Welcome to another Groove Lemonade, and this is the number 52. So we are going to be answering your questions. I'm going to, as usual, give you a short update on what's happening in the company, what are we, or what are we working on, um, what things are going to happen very soon, and things like that. So um, for those that may not know what's happening, you can post your questions in the comments of this live stream, whether you're watching on Facebook, whether you're watching on YouTube, just jump into, jump into the comment section and just post your questions there. I can already see some people joining in. I'm just going to very quickly welcome everybody here. So uh, Derek Scott is asking who's going to be the first to chat. So I'm going to show you that you are the first one. So welcome to this live stream. Gilmar is again here. Welcome again, Gilmar. It's good to have you here. Uh, Link is here. Kevin is watching us. And we have a couple more people that are just going to come in. I can see the numbers are growing up. AR Champion is here. Hey, yo. <laughs> okay, cool. So uh, while we are waiting for everybody to join, I'm going to give you a very quick update on what's happening in Groove. Um, so... A couple of things that went live, they are very interesting. Uh, I'm going to be doing an announcement, but just as a quick uh, quick announcement for you guys, we now have the option to manage the domains for GrooveCart within the main domain section. This is very useful because previously we have kind of a two different uh, systems to manage the domains, and you kind of had to just juggle around with different DNS records and things like that. And there was a, a lot of manual work needed. Now you can just hook up one domain, connect it to Groove Pages and Groove Blog, and also a subdomain you can use for GrooveCart now. You could also uh, use an email, um, sorry, a custom domain. Uh, with an email, so a branded email with your GrooveCart store through through these systems that we we have right now. So it's it's cool. So that's uh, that took us a couple of weeks to actually develop. There were a couple of, couple of issues there, but with that we also added an SRV record. So some people were asking me about uh, can we add SRV records to to Groove, and now we do have that option. I'm going to do an, uh, an announcement about that, so everybody is aware. So SRV records are available and also GrooveCart domains can be managed from the domain settings. Um, tonight or tomorrow, we are going to be deploying a 404 management within the domain settings as well. So you can manage your own 404 pages. This is very useful for people that do SEO. This is very useful for people that just want to brand themselves and just kind of hide that kind of Groove uh, Groove type of branding. Uh, so whenever you set up a 404, that's going to redirect everybody from a non-existent page to that actual um, to that actual page that you set up. So you could redirect people back to your homepage, back to your funnel. Uh, you could also create a custom 404 page or just uh, just play with that a little bit. So you create something something nice and something something your something that is going to be yours so that's going to come on either tonight or by the end of the day today or by two or tomorrow we will see how the deployment goes i can see uh, a lot of other people joining in so jacob is here angelo is watching us dr is here howdy i have um jp uh, watching us just listening today at the gym now awesome cool perfect um damien is watching us naveen is here and we have a couple of uh, uh mentions over here wow these domain changes and 404 changes are so needed uh thank you headed over to work with groove card domains now awesome cool kevin test it out if you find something let us know um okay a couple of questions here dr is asking you said domain with email um yeah so what i mean is you know how you can create a custom domain um, or you can connect a custom domain to Groove and you were able to actually create um, an email with that custom domain through G Suite or Microsoft 365 or something like that. But if you already had that connected, you wouldn't be able to do that with GrooveCart as well. So you, you had to have kind of two separate entities or two separate assets. Now you can actually have a full-on brand website with funnels and also a groove card connected all to one domain and also one email for those for all of those assets. Um, that's basically what I meant with an email. Uh, let's just see. D 
Dimio or Dimijo or Dimijo, not quite sure how to pronounce it. When connecting a custom domain in Groove Pages using the full domain setup, will I also need to create a Cloudflare account? Uh, no, so the full domain setup, you just let Groove handle everything and we're going to do, um, do, do everything on our side. You just basically click a couple of buttons and that's it. Okay, perfect. So, um, what else? Okay, yeah, uh, some cool announcement for, or not announcement, but cool happenings are uh, are going to be um, going to be starting in a couple of days, and that is our GrooveCon. GrooveCon is starting in a couple of days. For those of you that are going to actually go there physically to the to the conference, uh, good for you. I wish I would be uh, I would be there as well. Unfortunately, I will not be able to attend this year, but I'm going to be in the back, uh, basically just right here and managing the streams, managing the comments, and just helping out as much as I can from, uh, from the place where I am at right now. So uh, for those that are going there, great. You will have all of the schedules and everything uh, given when you arrive. But for those of you that are um, that are going to be watching from the comforts of your home. We are going to have a full-on um, schedule posted next week. So on the first next month, so basically in one, two, in the three days, I'm going to schedule the streams for, for GrooveCon. So um, on the actual thumbnails, you will be able to see who the speakers are, what time, who is coming on, and things like that. So that's basically going to show up uh for you if you are a paid member so if you're a platinum member the platinum members have free groove sorry free groove con access if you can make it you you know the the story about that but if you cannot make it you'll be able to watch the stream uh with us so that's what's happening um, a lot of awesome things were developed also specifically for this GrooveCon. Like, for example, we were working hard with the GrooveCell team to actually create physical payments, and that's going to be used on the GrooveCon itself. We, we also uh, created an, an option. I talked about that last week, uh, not last week, uh, last Q&A a little bit, um, that we have in GroovePay, and that's going to be, um, that's going to be more... Um, more optional for everybody um, as time passes but we are just waiting for approval from uh from apple um i i store or, or apple store or, or how do they call it app store um for approval for groove pay app which is going to allow you to kind of receive physical payments so you go to a you once you you registered and, and got access to, to GroovePay with a physical payments option. You're going to be able to download a mobile app for GroovePay. You just type in the number or, or the price that, that you want to charge, and there will be a physical terminal given to you, or you purchase a physical terminal where you can just tap a card or, or insert a card or swipe a card and make the transactions um, that way, which is very cool. So that was that was developed from, from the GroovePay and the GrooveSell team. We also worked on on some other stuff necessarily for um, for the presenters that are going to be on GrooveCon, so they can actually um, work better with the Groove system. Uh, more on that when it actually goes live for everybody, because I just don't want to now talk about it because it's not really useful for you guys. So yeah, that's basically it. What I wanted to mention: a lot of interesting. Um, Things have been started to being developed. Not sure if you were were here last time when I mentioned uh, for Groove Pages. We are working on heavily on our SEO settings, and that's something that that is being done in cooperation with the with a team from the OMG um, OMG machines OMG and um, and the Maps Rainmaker creators and basically um, Mike. And um, and Jason and and the team behind OMG, um, they are the SEO experts, and and in cooperation with them, we wanted to make Groove the best SEO platform out there. So what we started to do, and it's going to be available most probably from the next week, um, maybe over the weekend, but most probably over the next week. Um, sitemaps and robots txt that's coming on to Groove pages. We are also started to work on 
thumbnails for video elements now for example you you know there is a lot of funnels that have one main video and then when you scroll down there's a bunch of smaller videos that um that users put on for testimonials like for example if you received a video testimonial you can put that on the page but the more videos the more embeds you have on your page this is going to kind of uh bring weight for your pages it's, it's not going to load as fast so what we are doing is when you drag on a video element on your on the canvas you'll be able to toggle a switch which is going to say uh, show place placeholder first where you can upload a custom image custom placeholder it will be just a uh uh the, the actual person's face maybe you add on a uh, a play button on there and and that's an image so the images will load very fast uh, when when the first uh, first load of the of the website or the funnel is is done and it's basically going to load all of the images and then the users that want to see the testimonials they will click on an image that they want and then the image will convert to a video and then the video will start playing so that's kind of the we call it a thumbnails for videos which is basically um, um, yeah, kind of a placeholder that converts to video once clicked. So that's going to improve a lot of things for, for SEO. And when you're doing uh, page speed optimizations, you're, you're not going to, uh, th these page speed loaders will not, uh, not find the videos on the page because it's going to be just an image showing. So it's definitely a huge benefits for page speed. Um, yeah. What else? Um, Oh yeah, pop-ups. I mentioned pop-ups. That's now ready for deployment. We're just waiting for a couple of other, a couple of last checks. It's going live with beautiful designs that our team created. Also, custom patterns for background. At this moment, when you click on a background image or a, or a block, and then you go to the background settings of that block in Groove Pages, you have image and video. There's going to be a third option, which is going to be patterns and you can create all sorts of different wavy patterns or dots or x's and and things like that it's going to be uh, super cool uh, changing the opacity and the colors of those patterns is also going to be available so that's kind of to allow you a bit more uh, custom designs um move to and clone to is going live which is um, you can clone a page or a funnel to a different site or a, or between the funnels and webinars you can also clone and and move um both between sites and funnels and webinars and things like that so that's um that's kind of cool development from us um let's see Oh yeah, and one ma minor thing is text alignment in the in the in the forms. So when you have form uh, fields, we have a lot of people that want to be managing the placeholder uh, text. So when you're asking for your best email here, and then that's basically writ written in the actual form input uh, input field. So you will be able able to manage where do you want to show that uh, placeholder, left or right or center. Um, yeah, so that's all what I can see right now. I know that we have a couple more things that are being worked on. They may not be uh, fully ready yet or fully tested yet, so that's uh, not something I will mention right now. But yeah, that's kind of it. Um, other apps will have its own uh, cool things uh, being deployed, but I just we're not super close to those so i'm just going to mention them maybe next week when we are closer to the release date but yeah we're 13 minutes into this uh, conversation and i will now start doing the q a that actually we are here for so uh let me just go on and share my screen very quickly and this is going to be for the questions that came in earlier for uh, okay let me just have a look okay um these were the these were the posts that came in earlier for um for before we actually started the q a so brian dunn is asking a question i hope you're uh, having a great friday thank you very much i am um questioning groove pages slider i want the sliders to have the same vertical height no matter what content i put on them i can't figure out how to do this for example on slide one i want an h1 and then h2 but on the other slides i want only h2 tags this changes the vertical height on the slides uh, how do i make them identical height so the size 
doesn't uh, change as I add elements onto the slides? And is there a way to just copy slides uh, since 90% of the time you want to duplicate your elements and their formatting across slides? Um, great question, Brian. I seen that as well. I have a ticket in for the for the team to, to kind of make the slider element a little bit more flexible, a little bit more easier to work with. So let me just move out of this um, account and log into my own account. Um, the way we do it and the way we manage it with Groove is we try to do um, the same block on all our slides and then do modifications to those to that same block. So for example, you have now this block. Um, let me just remove this. And when we go to a slider block over here, what I would suggest to you is just find some blocks that you want to kind of do something similar with. Uh, so for example, if you want to have something like this, just zoom in a bit. So if this is the style that you want to kind of achieve, or if this is the style or or something else, like drag on this block and, and just drag it on all of the slides. So for example, um, I want to just use this uh, this block, and then I'm going to use that on, this, on the uh, slider one, and then I'm going to do that on the slider two as well. We have, uh, we have plans to kind of do a clone button over here or clone or delete button. So you can just really delete or clone your slides. Uh, that's going to be coming soon. I don't have an ETA yet, that's the plan. But for now, what you could do is just, is just kind of uh, drag on your blocks over here. And now the, the height of, of these blocks will be the same. Now, when you're going over to, to kind of change something or, or duplicate, you will need to manage your the height yourself. So in case uh, you, for example, have this now on here, you can make the size of this container maybe taller. For example, max width, you, not width, uh, you, manage the, you manage the height. So here, manage the height in pixels, and then you kind of uh, kind of create something that is that is the same same height as the previous one. For now, it's more manual work. There is no there is no way around it. I know it's not the best, but we will have that cloning option that you're that you're talking about. So you could also set up a fixed um, a fixed height. So height to be fixed in in pixels for the block. Sorry. So for this block. Um, okay, let's just see if that's the actual option. So you set up a fixed height for this. That's not the element. Let me just select, so this is the styleable element. Okay, let's manage this. So height, fixed height, yeah. So you see, if you set up the height to be, for example, 550, okay. and you move over to, next, to the next one, to the slide number two, see okay i want to move over to the next slide um i save and re reload um this is what i meant by making it more flexible there is a like it doesn't flow when you're working with it it should it should be more fluent uh when you're kind of managing the slides so now you have one of the slides with fixed width uh, hopefully that's saved yeah so 550 you can go on to the next one and also set up the uh the fixed height of this one to 550 and now you know how many things you have to to play with and then when you slide over it's going to be kind of the same so it's more manual work two things either just use the same block and then kind of manage the things or set up the same um same fixed width on the on the sliders uh, with the uh, sizing over here now you didn't see anything and i apologize sorry what i was doing here is selecting the styleable element i clicked over here to the height, selected fixed height, and just set up 550 over here. And that was the same as the previous one over here. Styleable element, size, height, and then 550. So that was the thing I was doing. Um, as you can see here, this one has a headline, and over here, the slide two, this one has a headline with another uh, subheadline, and they're kind of the both uh, the same height. So hopefully that helps. It's more manual work, but uh, yeah. That's how you do it. Um, okay, let's just move over to the next side. Um, is there a way uh, group pages can have a way to have a number counter so that we can add a number, uh, but the counter scrolls to the number 
once it's in viewport. Can we do that now? Oh yeah, um, this is the we don't have that element. That's a that's a specific element that you that you set up to to kind of scroll from one one number or kind of increase the numbers from from x to y, and then uh, it's kind of how many employees we have, how many coffees we drank, how many this, how many that. Um, that element is not available yet. If it is good to have it, uh, I haven't seen a lot of requests for it. But uh, if you want, head over to our feedback portal and request it here. If you want to have that, it's um, cool to have. It's not super necessary, but I can see how it would be useful. So uh, head over to our feature request um, portal over here and feel free to request it. Um, hey, cool, Dave. <laughs> we had to uh, submit some questions to Groove Support and they'll come back and ask for our login information. Doesn't Groove Support have a way to access our account from the back end? We don't. We don't. I, I've seen this question a lot of times. We don't and uh, once we will, it will. It will still. Um, we will still need to kind of put in a way or develop a way uh, to to let you guys know that Groove Support is logged in because we don't want to. Um, we don't want to kind of create a system for for entering somebody's somebody's account and just messing around and then saving and then that will cause even more support issues so at this moment we don't we are developing that and what we are doing is this is the user roles and permissions so our support will have a specific user role that they can log into an user id something so the thing is that that user roles is being developed right now. I mentioned that last time and the previous times. Uh, GrooveBlock team is working on that. And once you are able to actually uh, kind of provide a login for your VAs and for your users, this will be the time when we can also have our support login to your account without asking for information. Unfortunately, uh, that's the way it is. We, we will need to develop a way to actually show you somehow support is logged in or or something like that so that, uh, that you're aware that support went in there and, and had a look and if there were any changes that basically you can revert back maybe with you through revisions or something like that we'll have a discussion about that but at this moment we don't uh, sending your login information isn't very secure we know and that's why we're working towards that uh, that option but unfortunately we wouldn't be able to assist if there would uh, if you wouldn't send us the login information and to be honest um like if somebody is is messaging you through our help scout uh, or our help desk or through our email which is support at groovedigital.com you can just trust them like these are our team members and we have so many accounts uh, that we we pray to not have another account not not that we oh i cannot wait so i can go into somebody's account believe us it's if we support can just create a new account for uh, for themselves if you, if they want to kind of play around what we do with your accounts is we are very very careful believe me we are very careful we have standards and we have kind of an sop on what we can do what we shouldn't do what we need to confirm with you what we need to confirm with the management if we want to do so um if somebody asks you for for a login information that is only for the sole purpose of helping you uh, fix the issue sooner because sometimes when we replicate things like for example somebody reports oh my god i cannot clone a text element because it is broken so i go into my account first and then i then i do basically what i what you expect me to do i go i select a text element and i clone it and it works on my end so now, because it works on my end, I wasn't able to replicate. Okay, I would test it multiple times, different uh, blocks or just elements and things like that. But if I'm not able to replicate the issue, I would most probably ask you for your um, for your login information. So I see maybe within the builder you added in some code over here in the settings, or maybe some. Um, I don't know, with publishing uh, issues, there is a lot of times the DNS settings may be wrong or something. So we would need to look into to all of that setup that you have on your account that we can just not have um, from our side, unfortunately, yet. This will be done uh, soon and then we'll be able to have that. Hopefully this will be something that can be fixed in the future. Yeah, that's, that's what we are 
planning to do. Groovelog, uh, in Groovelog, when you add custom code, do you know if that goes into the header or body? For canonical links, it needs to go into the header. When I tested it, I could never actually see the code on the rendered pages. Also, just FYI that I submitted a bug report that the system truncates the custom code at a certain point. It would not let me uh, save my whole Facebook pixel code. Um, okay, if you submitted a bug, that's good. Our devs will look into it. But for for any type of code that you put in, we have three different sections. Just exactly as we have in the, in Groove Pages, when you go, it is asking you including head, including body top, or including body bottom. That's kind of the, the standard that we have in most of our apps in Groove, and the same thing happens with Groove Blog as well. So when you're adding in any kind of um, any kind of code into your settings over here, tracking when pixels, you have including head, including body body top including body bottom and now there is one extra thing where we allow you to kind of add in uh, adding code in your post if if that is the question that you are asking me then um this just adds in the code i believe to the to the head i'm not 100 percent sure but that's what i've seen when i add in some code normally the code loads first and then the, the rest of the content um but i I would be able to double check that, but I believe this is going to the to the actual. So this is the custom code field over here. This is going in the on the top of the page when it loads. So hopefully that helps. Okay, so we now have gone through all of the questions here from the from the Facebook um, Facebook post. And I'm going to log in to 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 see all of your questions that you asked me from this live stream. So let's see. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, the first question I have here is, hey, David Dean here, are there problems with GrooveMail now? As because I've sent a few, few test emails lately that never came come in. Uh, thank you. Um, no, like we are sending emails. I have been testing GrooveMail uh, for, for some new functionalities and the emails are being delivered nicely. Um, there may be some issues with uh, the integration with the SMTP servers, or there may be some verification issue, or or there may be some uh, something with the actual contacts that you want to send to. Um, I wouldn't be able to kind of point it to, point you to the right direction right now but what i can do is um reach out to our support if they if you give them your kind of um sender id or the sender email you kind of give them the the emails you are trying to test uh the sending to like for example from your dean at domain.com you want to send to uh, dean is awesome at gmail.com for example um, and it didn't arrive so give them the, all of the details as much as you can so they can look into it for you and they will be able to kind of pinpoint okay this is the problem this is what you would need to work on now with uh, GrooveMail we did also a small uh, small deployment I'm going to show you here um, whenever you are sending out any kind of uh, email campaigns or broadcasts, for example, you will have um, you will have the issues um, shown in the error message. So let's just see if I have something. So if the actual um, status of the of the email comes back as as not sent or kind of error or something with the red color over here, uh, we now have the option to kind of see what is the reason for that. So this is going to help our support and also help you guys for when you're sending and there is an error message, you'll be able to kind of know what the reason for the, uh, for the error is. So that's now been done. I don't have a failed uh, message, but I'm I'm pretty confident it's going to show up. Uh, you click over here or over here to this eye icon. So, yeah, that's basically about that. Let's see. Um, if I shoot a video on my Android, what's the quickest method to upload to Groove Video? Um, great question. You you wouldn't be able to kind of upload it from your from your mobile phone. So I would I would suggest you just kind of hook up with an old cable old trusty cable <laughs> um just connect connect your phone to your computer and just use your phone as a usb thumb drive or a usb disc and just 
go to Groove Video, select the video that you have on your phone's memory card or your phone's in internal memory and just is uploaded directly from there. Unfortunately, that's the quickest option that I can suggest to you. I know people people will be looking for some digital solution, but you asked me for the quickest one, so that's the quickest one. The other solution would be kind of to upload it somewhere to um, to YouTube maybe, and then take a YouTube link and connect it with uh, with uh, Groove Video. That's not not the best thing because you would still have the YouTube branding, but also on that topic, um, we are working on on removing this YouTube branding um, because it seems that YouTube changed their policies. So what we will do is um, we will allow uh, we will allow you guys to actually have uh, YouTube URLs copied over, paste it into the Groove Video um, video uploader, and then um, and then have a video inside the group video player um, but it's going to be actually a YouTube video uh, so it's not going to have any kind of branding or ads or things like that that's something that we are we are planning to work on in the next uh, next couple of weeks um, and then you can kind of use YouTube as a as your um, as your folder, let's just say it as a folder where you upload your videos, you make them unlisted, and then you kind of use it for your membership. So you can make them listed as well and kind of use it with a Groove Video Player. And um, on top of that, you'll have all of the power of, of tagging and um, showing an opt-in form and things like that on the videos that you that didn't directly upload to YouTube, but over to, uh, that didn't directly upload to Groove Video, but over to YouTube first. Uh, and that's basically exactly what I just said. Eric uh, probably uploaded to YouTube unless and then copy the link and put it into inside Groove Pages or Groove Video. You can also use that for Groove Video. Um, let's just see. Are heat maps for pages in the works or on the horizon? I don't think so. Uh, heat maps are something that uh, require full-on tracking and analytics and things like that. And there are there are super good free options already. Like there are uh, most of these. Most of the most of the, these big names like Microsoft and Google have their own solutions already, so you can just just use their their options. For us at this moment, it's not a not a not an important thing. We would previously we would before any kind of heat map for sure develop the A/B split testing, but the A/B split testing is also the next year's task. So at this moment, heat maps are not on the. Uh, on the roadmap, um, you can go onto the feedback portal, request them there, and see how many people we we have. But on the previous feedback portal that we had, we didn't have a lot of people upvoting it um, because most of them there already have their own solutions. There is one that I I've seen a lot of users use is Microsoft. Uh, heat maps. They have kind of a funky name that I cannot, Clarity, here we go. So Microsoft Clarity, free heat maps and session recordings. And this is a great tool, a great platform. It's basically fully free. Um, they they kind of show all the data that you need and it's, uh, and it's pretty powerful. So um, we don't have a, a plan to develop this one for now because it's just not something that we use ourselves, but if, uh, for in the future, users want that and they request it, then we'll probably add that in. But I just wanted to show you that you have options at the moment, even for free. Um, bum, bum, bum. David, do you know where I can get more feminine templates for emails like Flowdesk have? Um, I don't know what Flowdesk is, but let's have a look. Flowdesk, I believe some membership platform, design email, okay. No platform. Uh, let's see what feminine templates they have. Okay, so you would like to use this with GrooveMail, I guess. So we'll have our, our GrooveMail builder. Let me just give you a sneak peek very quickly. Um, with a GrooveMail builder, when it comes out, it's not ready yet. It's still being worked on. We'll also need to develop templates for that one, but I'm just going to give you a kind of, a, as I mentioned, sneak peek. So... Um,
just log into the test account and show you what we are working on. I'm not sharing that screen right now. I'm just going to log in very quickly and then I will show you. Okay, here we go. So we will have a we'll have a builder that is going to be um, be able to do things like what Flowdesk can do. From what I can see, it's not nothing special. Basically, gives you option to kind of manage the the images and the text and and the different sizing and options, color alignment and things like that. We will have that as well, and it's going to look like this. At this moment, this is just early stages. We are just doing it in phases. Okay, let's just do this next, and then compose your email. So this is going to show up, build your email, and then we'll have uh, a full um, kind of an email builder. So when you when you add on text, you'll have a background color, you'll have all of the text formatting options, you'll be able to add also uh, images and things like that. You'll be able to manage the images and, and, and such. This is just a builder that we're working on now. We will also have templates, as I mentioned, and you'll be also able to save your emails to reuse later. For example, you created an email for um, Christmas, discount and you want to now save this email call it christmas discount email then maybe use it next year as well and then when you when you start creating a campaign um oops let me just exit from here uh, you're going to get kind of uh, create uh, select a sender and then uh put in the subject and instead of this compose email you're going to also have a button like select a, a previously saved email or select a prepaid email or something like that so, I, we don't really know how how we will call it yet, but you'll be able to kind of uh, save your emails that you previously created and reuse them in future campaigns. This is also going to happen in the sequences and things like that. So, um, yeah, templates will be coming and all sorts of different things will be coming. But for now, if you want, you can use uh, Be Free, I believe, um, email builder. They provide uh, free, responsive emails um, that you can. You can see their templates over here. And once you designed your email, you can copy over the HTML code that they give you. As you can see, there are a lot of different templates. Um, not sure if they give you kind of filtering collections uh, or maybe product launch. Let's see a product launch email. Okay, so this is a this is a product launch type of email that they they give you. It's not something that you kind of ask for, but you can kind of uh, see it here. And you basically go in, you log into this be free, and uh, you start kind of editing your email. And once you're done, you copy over the. Let's just use this. Get started. This one is a free. Let's see if I can access it. You copy over the HTML code and you bring it in the in the current GrooveMail builder where you can just paste the code. Uh, let's see if this one has subscribe to list. Okay, this will be working. So then you can just click here, view HTML and paste the paste the code here. So let's have a look, export, and then copy the HTML. Now it gives you the HTML code and yeah, you need to log in. And then you'll just basically paste that into the, to this builder and then you'll be having the, the kind of, your campaigns created with that kind of nicely designed emails. I know that I went a little bit longer than what you asked, but um, at this moment, GrooveMail doesn't have rich, kind of uh, nicely created emails. That's something we're working towards. But at this moment, you can use free tools, um, design your email, copy the source code, paste it into GrooveMail, and you can use, you can send out already these types of nice, rich emails. When will email be out of sandbox? Can you give me an update on email app deliverability, etc.? Email will be out of sandbox when we when we have e the GrooveMail SMTP created. That is um, that is being work 
worked on and I don't have an ETA, unfortunately. Um, deliverability, at this moment, all, uh, all the emails are delivered through third-party SMTPs. So some people will say, oh, the deliverability is bad. Um, I only managed to send 140 email, uh, 114 emails out of my 150,000 contacts. I don't know. Uh, but things that what you need to be careful of is it completely depends on your on your account that you have connected right now. So if you have a free um, SendGrid account connected to your GrooveMail, you will only be allowed to kind of send out 100 emails per day, which is a lot for some people, but it, it may not be for, for your needs. So if you have a lot of contacts, if you know that you will be sending out a lot of emails, uh, kind of use uh, use a paid option with these uh, service providers and then the deliver deliverability is going to be good. Um, the email apps being worked on, we still have a lot of things that we want to implement like analytics and uh, full-on automations and connect the app with the other platforms and the rich email builder and um, like we have a bunch of things on our on our on our to-do list for GrooveMail, but it's it's working as a as a as an email sender already with these third-party tools. We we'll, we have SendGrid, SparkPost, MailGun, and we are now working on SES from Amazon um, that you're going to be uh, able to connect on the side. A, lot, uh, a couple of team members are also working on the GrooveMail um, sending servers as well. Um, Activity log is another thing that we will be adding in uh, to Groove Mails. Like um, if somebody opened your email, if they clicked on a link, if they actually purchased something once you sent them an email, if they watched your video that you directed them on, and things like that. Like a full on activity log that is going to be uh, coming soon. Um, it's not even that far into the future. Like uh, we are, we're already doing uh, partial tests for that. Um, more automations. I mentioned that integrations within automations and things like that. So, yeah, a lot of lot of things that be that are being worked on. But right now, it's it's still in sandbox. That means that it's not using our own email ser senders, and there is still improvement, like heavy improvements that are being worked on. Reswan has a question. Hi, David. Uh, when can we have custom font in Groove Page? I had to put uh, I had put the fe feature request since last year, but eagerly waiting for an update. Custom fonts. We looked into that one, and we will need to we will need to add that in. We looked into the ways on how we can do that, uh, but the thing that we were we we saw is that a lot of platforms have legal. Uh, potential legal issues due to users uh, illegally downloading fonts and using them on their pages. So uh, this was the first thing that we saw um, one of like a couple bigger builders have. Uh, there were conversations on the legalities of, of custom fonts and things like that. So we we still need to find a, a good way to allow, uh, allow fonts because we don't want to kind of um, allow something that has been illegally downloaded because we will have, we will be contacted and we will have the legal issues. Um, so that's that needs to be sorted first and we will be able to add on custom font options. Um, it would be also good if we could kind of provide a, an app-wide custom font option, like you go into your account and upload your custom fonts and then use it on, in Groove Member and Groove Cart and Groove everything. But for now, this is just just a, a task that we didn't get to yet uh, but we did have conversations about that we'll need to we'll need to kind of sit down and, and think through on how we will we will implement that but for now feature requests are good but we're we still uh, don't find it as a huge prior priority right now how can I integrate GrooveCard to Razor Pay? I heard Groove uh, hasn't released SDK to connect third-party payment gateways. Whether uh, we are not able to use PayPal for domestic payments in India, any suggestions? At this moment, unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to suggest you uh, a solution for Razor Pay. Um, SDK will need to be developed, and then you can kind of do uh, kind of connect custom payment gateways for for the for GrooveCard and for the other apps. But for now. Um, I believe to check out 
is the option that you can use. Let's just double check quickly. Um, also, Stripe is in India, I believe. Stripe countries. I may be wrong, but I believe they have. Uh, so you could use Stripe easily. I may be wrong, though, so we'll check. Let's see. Okay, India. There is something here which says preview. Um, okay, it maybe wants to drop me into a, to a custom. So you could use Stripe. It's widely used in the world. Um, as you can see, India is, is highlighted as an option. But you could also use to checkout. Let me see. Global support. Let's see, Europe, Africa, Middle East, Central America, and let's just see, Bangladesh. Most probably India is here because these guys just have most of the world's countries covered. Let's see, here it go, India. So currency, Indian rupees, American Express, bank transfer, MasterCard, Skrill, Visa. So it's not Razor Pay. It's not the exact payment gateway that you asked me about, but I just showed you two that you could use with GrooveCard. And a Stripe, you can also use with Groove Sell already. Um, you could also apply for Groove Pay. So Groove Pay also um, has uh, has India there. Uh, I I'm I'm confident. I'm not hundred percent sure, but reach out to our support. They would be able to tell you exactly. I'm confident that they have. I just don't know it for certain. Uh, and Groove Pay would be the best option for you. Uh, when we pull a gallery photos, a type of layout in Groove Pages, the phone view shows one by one photo in full screen. How can we do it like Instagram grid layout in phone three across with? Um, okay, so I did a training on this one already. I'm just trying to think of how, how did I call it? Um, the, but the thing is that you can't can't do that with the exact element. So what you would need to do is kind of uh, clone that element and um, and do a different layout. Let me just show you. So let me just come to this block and delete this. And then what you're talking about is the empty blocks that look like a gallery. For example, this one. So. Now we have we can put in images into these and on the mobile it's going to show one by one by one. So what you want to do is uh, show kind of three images on the side. Um, what you would do in this case is kind of duplicate this. So the top one will show on on the bigger screens like on these three for example. So I would just come over here into this one and say layout none okay and then on this one also layout none what i did now is basically i i showed the upper one on this one this one and this one so i would come over to to, to the lower block that I that I cloned and I would hide it on the on the top three devices. Basically this is of course when you already designed everything. Um, so you go into the layout settings and then you hide it from the desktop, hide it from the laptop, hide it from this horizontal tablet view. And now what you have is just a view of this second block in a mobile and a vertical tablet. Now, what you can do is either use this exact block, but then in this case, you you make the containers smaller. So you set up the height to be auto, but this one you make smaller, like for example, 33% or 33. Okay, Then you make this one smaller as well, which is again, auto. And then relative to the parent, let's just say 33. Okay. And then do this one as well, layout, and then, oops, not layout, but size. Make this auto, and then here, 33. So this is 33, 33, 33. So they should now, uh, they should now stack 
next to each other. We just need to change the layout settings. So I believe inline or one of these uh, one of these options will put the, all of the three containers next to each other. So let's just see inline flex. That's not the one. Not the block table. One of these will be putting them next to each other. I just need to figure out which one. Uh, also, the layouts are going to be changed a little bit because um, because we will need to. Uh, I believe the the inline and the flex maybe may maybe having some some display issues with uh, different elements. So. Uh, one of these options will have uh, will have the setting that uh, that the containers will come next to each other. Maybe we need to make it a little bit smaller now. Still, just to kind of stack up next uh, one by one. And basically, that's that's the way how how you would do it. How you would kind of uh, manage it. Now, I, it may also be because I need to put in some content in there uh, that it. It doesn't does, doesn't fully stack next to each other, but basically that's how it should show. Um, what you would need to have is you set it up in the in the in the big screen devices, then you clone the whole thing, and then you make it specially for the for the vertical smaller devices where you can then stack next next uh, all the three next to each other. Um, it's a bit more manual work, I know, but if you want to have this type of custom layouts on a mobile phone, unfortunately, that's what you would need to manage. Um, yeah, it was not successful, I know, but um, I will try and find that training. I, I know that I did exactly this scenario um, in one of the builds. It was maybe uh, my Q&A build or something. Um, I will find it. I cannot think of the name right now, but I did a full training specifically for this. Um, okay, let's just move on to the next question and see if we have any. Um, okay, I lost the scroll now. Okay, here we go. Um, I didn't see a way in the new roadmap to search the bug reports feature requests, so we don't submit a duplicate or find things to upload. Am I miss? Am I just missing it? Uh, no, you're not missing it. I believe this is just one of the things that uh, that the actual feedback platform is missing. So the they have things that they call ideas. Ideas is similar to what we have in the feature request, but it um, it's it's not exactly what I what I. What I wanted that those ideas have the sorting and the and the search options, uh, but it's it's still not something that I that I think is needed. So the feature requests and the bug reports are uh, are kind of specific uh, uh, specific feature requests from 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 users. Ideas is something that is one step further. That's going to be um, enabled by me, I believe, in the next two weeks because I'm still managing it. Ideas are, are going to be something that, ooh, there's a feature request. I think we, we need to do that. So it's going to it's going to go into an idea phase. So it's between the feature request and a roadmap, some, something like that I want to use these ideas for. But I will reach out to the, to the creators of the platform for the feedback that we use because because we still are missing that sorting and search functionalities in our bug reports in the feedback portal and also though when you're reporting a new a new ticket it's it's um in in the previous feedback portal when you were typing in the actual title it was doing a very quick search to see if there was an existing ticket or existing report uh with the same kind of keywords um and that is not not happening right now. So I don't know if, if I missed it when I was setting it up or it's not existing in this um, in this platform, but I will definitely check with, uh, with, with their company and see if they can add that on if it's not there yet. Um, sounds good. I worked for an aerospace firm a while ago and sometimes saw IT messing around with my account. Yeah, there we go. Is there any estimation about when GrooveCart will have integration to GrooveMail, GrooveVideo? Um, soon, uh, when the activity logs in GrooveMail come out, and that's, as I mentioned earlier, that's uh, that's being developed, uh, we will have the, we'll have the, 
the the way to manage the information coming from those different platforms and then that that is going to happen we will connect to to all of our apps if i shoot a video on android device okay i actually answered that one for group quite i just saw that the domains area has been changed and i do not have my access to my dns records may i know how i can add dns records for my store um i mentioned that earlier that was a new feature that we added uh, whenever you are managing your domains in Groove, here in your account settings, GrooveCart has been added here as well. So your domain should be should show that GrooveCart is available. So you can now click on GrooveCart and manage the the subdomain. Or if you want to ha manage the DNS records for your GrooveCart domain, you do that from here. Uh, from now, on. I'm going to do an announcement about that today. Um, okay. How are themes for GrooveCart coming on? And uh, will we have the ability to customize the top header section to match the style of stores we're creating? Also, will there be more fonts? Uh, yes, all of that is planned. We will have um, we'll have an option to kind of set up everything in advance. And when you create the next page or or something relevant to your store, it's going to already use that settings. The Development on it is working, uh, working progress. We, uh, I don't know the exact details on what they're working on right now, but I know that it's every day. Um, uh, it's an everyday, uh, they, they are doing more and more. Um, we will be releasing, um, what's it called, ship station uh, next week. So that's cool. And after that, the, the front end team of uh, GrooveCart is working on teams. And the backend team will be working on the on subscriptions and installments. We'll have subscriptions and installments this is almost identical to what GrooveCell has, but in GrooveCart we'll have a little bit uh, more features because we need to manage the different variants. So let's just say you have a you have a subscription box, but that subscription box uh, may have. Um, non-alcoholic option for example if you're selling food with with drinks non-alcoholic option and an alcoholic option and things like that so the subscription of these options you would manage uh, manage differently in groove card subscriptions uh, than in groove cell because of these variants so that's being uh that's that's coming next i'm going to put that also on the roadmap i'm just waiting for some kind of screenshot of some kind of um uh, some sort of visual option that they that the team will give me um, in Groove Pages, in the past, it was possible to add tracking link to the home page, and it would be added to any page created. Is is it still possible, uh, Gary? Yes, that's that's just uh, going into the settings of the site, and then you can add that here. So previously, we had the site settings over here in the top right hand corner but that was kind of a strange place to have builder settings we added them here into this little cogwheel now so if you click on the settings and then site settings you still can do all of that so add on codes for the whole site this means every page will have this code uh, on there or you can also add on custom css for the whole site or the favicon and, and things like that so this this is still there is just on a different place. We had it here. Now we have it here. Um, okay. If I want to link Groove Page and Blog, how do I use one domain? The the, the setup is very simple. So what you need to do is um, head over to the head over to any of your any of your actually just log into Groove go into your account domains and then here manage once you set up your domain decide which is going to be the primary app the primary app is is the one that is underlined here in my case i selected the groove pages and the reason is because if you have your site your website or something that's the if somebody types in domain.com i'm i want them to see my website in your case, you may want to show your store on domain.com. For example, tinylittleshoes.com could open your store. Okay, um, but once you have connected your your domain to Groove with the actual full and recommended setup, it's very simple to manage anything. So if I want to connect my blog now to this same domain, I would just click over here, add a new subdomain. For example blog and this would create blog.grooveassist.com 
Okay, here we go. Now I just created a subdomain and I can just go to my blog and publish it. So let me just show you here. I have I've created a subdomain, but I haven't connected it yet. So it's not going to show that uh, that it's connected, but it's going to show that it's available. So the previously the actual blog icon was grayed out and now it is purple. So that's basically it. You could do you could do it this way. Um, you could also go into into group blog and inside your uh, your publishing settings there you can uh, here we go so this is group blog inside the domain settings you can actually set this up so do you want to publish to a root domain or, or a subdomain or a folder you manage that over here um also for security, how do we make sure that the pages citing group pages are not injected with malware based on the experience at Bluehost and WordPress? Um, Bluehost and WordPress are open uh, open source platform and they allow different kind of plugins to be coming into the system. Groove is a closed, a closed platform which we don't allow any kind of external applications to tinker with our database. Um, this this way we don't we cannot get malware now we could get the malware if somebody uh broke our firewalls and all of the securities that we have and um install it there but we have a bunch of different things uh done so that that cannot happen as easily um with wordpress you basically need to just create a plugin and then have somebody install a plugin, you now have access to the whole their whole site. That cannot happen with Groove because Groove is a closed system. So you don't have to worry about malware. There is no security uh, kind of checkers needed with, with these cloud softwares. Like for example, uh, ClickFunnels or, uh, or Breezy Cloud or I don't know, Leap Pages or, or platforms like these, they don't need to have any kind of antivirus or antivirus, anti-security systems because they are closed loop. You cannot have um, malware uh, added to those uh, closed loop platforms. Okay, this is not a question. I still don't understand what the campaign tags are and how they are used in GrooveMail. Um, Kevin, I explained that to you er, some time ago. You have a campaign which you want to send for, I don't know, for a discount. So you tag that email, a discount email. So that's a tag for your campaign type. Or let's just say um, you want to create a, a Black Friday promo or a product launch email campaign or, or something like that. You basically have different types of, of campaigns that you can sell and you can create those email tags that way. Um, any ideas on GrooveMail when AV, AWS SCS is coming? Um, that's being developed. I don't see it being very long. So maybe next week or the week after that. When would be all tools working on, on by own in Groove with full versions. Um, old tools, that's hard to tell because we keep adding new ones. Um, so there's no there's there's no end date for Groove. Groove will most probably always be developing new platforms and new kind of apps. And when will it have full versions? Now it just depends what you mean by full. Um, if you visit Facebook, or if you visit Google, if you visit any of the big platforms, they still have roadmaps and things that they want to improve. Now, if you want to say, like, one is the final version when we decide not to develop any further going to happen, I cannot tell you. That's most probably, like, years <laughs> ahead. Um, probably when my grandkids are still working for Groove, hopefully, knock on wood. But at this moment, I cannot tell you. Groove is, and the software in, in general is just something that you get, you develop sequentially. Like you, you add on an improvement and then you improve it even better. And then you add on a new feature, then you improve it, then you fix the bugs, then you improve it, then you basically find a new feature. And it's, it's just kind of going up and up and more and more and, and it just never stops. If you ask me when the features that we currently have, not, not new features, the ones that we currently have will be full versions, 
and and you can kind of fully rely on them also the same thing with apps when will the when will the apps when what we have currently kind of leave the beta stage i would say around mid next year um some of the platforms that we have like GrooveMail is still new it still has uh, a couple months uh, needed to be developed so that it is it is kind of in the ranks of the other platforms. Uh, we recognize that, and we, we we never said that like active campaign you will not need to use immediately when you go on to GrooveMail. Uh, that's just not something we can say. But uh, the apps that we currently have, I believe, mid next year we will have them fully stable so that we can call them kind of. Um, standalone platforms but for the feature sets and improvements and things like that it's just you cannot you i i wouldn't be able to say a date because it's just always uh, improvements and new features are being added on for yourself like can you already use it most probably you can because you don't need all of the features that will be coming out in the future they may be uh, they may be simplifying the work that you that you have currently but it's just like you may not use none of the new features that we add on in the future as well i installed a countdown timer on my web page but it's not working very well whenever i re revisit the page it starts to count from the beginning this happens even after changing the timer settings um carrie i'm not quite sure what the settings are and how you how you have it and what your plan is but i could suggest you do uh, if you could uh, create a full video where you explain, okay, I, this is my page. This is the actual URL of the page. This is the builder that I'm building it in. This is the URL of the builder. Um, here's what I'm trying to do. When somebody goes to my page, da, 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 you explain that in a short video. Just record your screen with Loom or something. It doesn't have to be long, a couple minutes, but try to try to give us as much detail as, as you can. Reach out to support. So support.groovedigital.com is our help desk. Re raise a ticket or chat with somebody. Provide them this video and they will be able to assist you either immediately there or within a couple of days when, uh, when we figure it out, uh, would it be a bug? Would it be a setup that is wrong or would it be something that uh, that is missing? Um, they would be able to kind of give you the, the right answer. At this moment on this q and I'm not, I'm not able to, I, I don't know what you're trying to do and what was the setup and things like that. Do you know uh, any alternative to do A-B a testing with Groove Pages? Yeah, Google has a great tool for A-B testing. Let me just, just type in Google A-B testing and then you, you'll find it. Google Optimizer or something like that. Google A-B testing. Um, let's just see. Google Optimize. Here we go. Is your website... Uh, okay, so how Optimizer can help your website. It's basically... Uh, you kind of connect your site in there. They give you a, a, a kind of a page builder where you switch the text or switch certain aspects of your website, change colors or change something, and then you kind of do uh, the, this A-B testing. That's what I would suggest to everybody. It's free and it's, uh, it's a great tool to kind of A-B test your platform. Maybe even Google has a, a heat map software. Not sure. Google heat map tool. Maybe it's also in this optimize. Google Analytics heat map. There we go. So Google also has a heat map tool. I didn't know that. This seems like an old article. Create a heat map support from Google. Yeah, so Google basically has you covered if you're using it. Microsoft also has their own tools. Let's see if Microsoft has an A-B testing tool. Okay, I don't think that they do that. Um, but yeah, Google does it. Okay, let's just go on to the next question. 
are there plans to integrate Square as payment gateway without the use of Zapier? I don't know because Groove Paid, what thing that we are developing right now is kind of going to be, uh, uh, it's it's an alternative for Square. Would you would you consider it as that or not? Um, we don't want to integrate with every payment gateway in the world because we have our own, and that's what we're going to try to push. Probably Square also doesn't integrate with all of the tools like Razor Pay and Stripe and things like that because they have their own. So um, you, we know that we work with all kinds of customers, but so do they. If they don't integrate with a bunch of other payment gateways, we probably don't want as well because um, when you develop something yourself you want users to use that so that's the story on groove pay we also have groove cell uh, groove cell plus which is also going to be a type of a payment gateway um so we are in a in a payment processing and 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 uh, sales platform business the same the same spot as square is so i don't think that square will be an option um in the near future, uh, but I may be wrong. I may be completely wrong. That's just my guesstimate um, because I see it as, as they are a direct competition to us. Uh, but that may change in the future. If it changes, then I do not have an ETA for that, unfortunately. Uh... When, I re when I received my two uh, affiliate payment which already done 31st of august i tried chat but not received proper response vijay i don't have an answer for that one they we have a proper affiliate support if you already raise a ticket then just please wait for a um please wait for reply uh, 31st of august that was a couple of weeks ago um i just i just don't have an answer there, there is a people that actually go into the account see who you sold or who actually signed up for, through you, who purchased, what, and, and they do the payments. I just don't have access to that. And I don't even try to go into that way because I don't want to get into deep in each and every corner of, of people's jobs in Groove. Can we use custom font in Groove pages? You can use uh, fonts from, uh, from Google like a Google Fonts, but you cannot upload a font right now into Groove Pages. That's something I answered earlier. There was a question from Res1, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so the custom font question was asked by Res1. I answered that. Um, we had talks about that. We don't have a solution for that yet, but we 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 will most probably want to add that in the future, but not only for Groove Pages. We want to add it for, for all of the apps because uh, it would be silly if you need to upload the font specifically for Groove Pages, specifically for Group Blog, specifically for this, specifically for that. So we probably want to handle that in a global kind of uh, way. Is there an easy way to move my content from Kajabi to Groove? No, unfortunately, the, the platforms like membership platforms, they just don't want you to move away easily so um for example when you're when you're transferring to a different platform that's going to probably hurt you um whether you do it with memberships whether you do it with websites whether you do it with any kind of platform really because uh people want to see you come in but they don't want to see you leave so kajabi will most probably never create an exporter because they just don't have it as a priority for for allowing people to leave uh, and importing um, content from a different membership site is just almost impossible task. So we won't create an importer. I don't see it happening anytime soon uh, because every platform manages content in a membership differently and, and it's just not possible to, to create an importer for each and every platform. So the only way at this moment is just to kind of copy paste the texts, download the videos, download the photos, download the checklist that you have in Kajabi and just re-upload them to Groove. It may be a, kind of a, it's not a complex task, it's just a time consuming task. So you may find also VAs or uh, people that actually do this in our Facebook community. So if you are not a part, I mean, you are watching from Facebook, so you probably are in the community right now. Just create a post, ask if somebody would be willing to help um, 
you transfer things over from Kajabi to, to Groove, um, I'm pretty confident that you'll get at least 20, uh, 20 offers for this. Um, is there an easy way? Okay, I just answered that. How do I copy a page from a website inside group pages to another page, also inside group pages, uh, to another page? How do I copy a page from a website inside group pages to another page, also inside group? So we have at this moment, I will show you what we have and I'll show you what's coming. So let's just say that this is my website. I know it's ugly. It was just a test earlier, but... What you could do is go into pages, you click this, and then you say uh, clone, okay? You could also have, let me see, we had an option to move and, and clone. I think that was removed. There was a couple of issues. Um, let me see if I can, I can get that option right now. Okay, so we actually removed that. We had an option to move pages between uh, funnels, pages, and webinars. At this moment, it's not uh, it's not available because we are releasing um, either over the weekend or or early next week the option to to move and clone two different pages and and sites. So let me just show you here. Hopefully, this is still uh, the test server. Um, Give me just one moment. I'm not sharing anything. I'll just uh, open it first. Okay, so I'm on the test server and if it is still here, it's not. Let's try the pre-production server. Just accessing this different service to, to try and show you what's coming uh, that's going to be available next week. And this is cool. I was, um, I, I saw a lot of people were waiting for that one. Let's see. So this is another server. It doesn't look anything different for you guys, but it's, it's a, much complex task, much more complex task than anything else. So as you can see, if I click over here, these three dots for pages, we now have two options, move to and clone to. This is how it's going to look like from next week. You will have these options as well. Move to means that actually take this page and actually move it somewhere else so that it doesn't stay where it is right now. And clone to, it means that copy and then move it to somewhere else. Let's just do this, clone to. Now you'll get this uh, where it shows clone page to a diff to this site or a different site. You can actually select a different site that you have in your accounts. All of the sites will load in here and then you can move it to the primary navigation or in case you have also a funnel folder or a webinar folder created, you will be able to, to add them on here as well. So that's coming next week. Uh, this is the pre-production server. We're doing tests in here just to see how it will act and if it will break anything else when we release it. Uh, once the tests are done uh, for this and the, some of the other stuff that we want to, re, uh, to deploy, you'll be having access to the clone to and move to, which is super awesome. How do I activate the countdown timer group pages so it works properly? Uh, I actually answered this one, Carrie. Please reach out to support. Hi, David. Uh, earlier you mentioned site wide head codes in group pages, site settings. Is this intentional that when you use these settings, the code doesn't appear in, in individual pages? Um, not sure what you mean. If you kind of, um, I would suggest if you have this issue, and most probably that's why you're asking because you've seen that. Try to record a, a short use case uh, video with with a screen recorder and reach out to support. They would be able to look into it. I'm not a developer, so I don't. I cannot just like open the inspect element of a site and then go into dive in and and see what's happening there because that's just like a foreign language to me. It's like an alien language. Uh, I know some basic. HTML and copy pasting of CSS, but that's kind of the extent of my development knowledge. So if you could, I would appreciate if you do this, the, the devs would they would be able to look into this and then and then see what's happening. 
what would be the difference between group pay and versus group cell plus is there an eta for group cell plus group cell plus is going to be um some type of a payment option like what you have with clickbank when you when you go and sell with clickbank uh, you don't actually bring your own um payment gateway for or merchant processing option you you use their own so what this means is that they are going to um they're going to process the payments for you while you uh, basically you sell through their own payment gateway and uh, you get you get pay payouts and things like that much faster uh, they also handle paying off affiliates for you and things like that so they manage the money but because they you, you use their own kind of uh, payment option um but they uh they charge you a percentage so this percentage varies i don't know and group cell plus will be the same so we will pay uh we will handle the the transactions for uh for selling your products we will handle the payment paying out of affiliates we'll handle all of that um uh, all of that stuff and we'll just take a percentage for all of the actual payments uh from from your sales so that's that's the actual group cell plus model um mike did a full-on demo uh, in one of the one of the previous uh one of the previous uh, state of the groovians so you may have seen that already uh, the estimated time for group cell plus is once we come out with the wallet the wallet is going to be the back-end system or kind of the brains of the whole uh, of the whole group cell and managing of the payments paying out affiliates and things like that that's the wallet is the system that will allow us to create um, automatic affiliate payments and uh, connect these group cell plus type of things so that's something that will come in uh, in next year i don't have an exact date when but uh but that's just something that I'm pretty confident will be worked on in the first uh, first quarter of, of the next year. Um, perfect. We'll do download everything and transfer to Groove. Thank you, David. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Um, any idea how to do two columns with 30-70 ratio, not 50-50 in Groove pages? I, I, there is no uh, easy way to do this except to... Uh, to go into the blocks and find a block that you want. So you said 3070. So either this one or yeah, this one. I believe this is like 2080 or yeah, maybe even 3070. But there is also this one, which is kind of a bigger. So this one or this one. So this one or this one. It is already set up for you. We also have on the left hand side, we have the small, and on the right, we have the big one same like this or we have the right hand side ha have the small one and then the left hand side the big one so both of these are available uh, on either one or the other side so you can choose these and then start working with this if you want to kind of delete all of the spacing around this you can you can do that as well just by removing the the spacing and padding on the on the containers and the blocks and things like that so we have pre-made empty blocks for for this type of setup um is the clone 2 feature also available for free memberships yeah so this is going to be available right now for free memberships we may limit things later on but i don't know um if we will uh, that's just still being uh being decided but uh but yeah we for now it will be um okay so one hour and 23 minutes in i managed to answer all of your questions guys if you have any more questions feel free to feel free to chime in um yeah so a lot of a lot of uh, interesting stuff is happening but i was a i was a i'm a part of a of a of another lifetime deal that is happening in um in, in the on the internet um and their company is suffering a lot because they had no communication with with their customers they had no support they had no they basically didn't provide anything to their customers for a couple of months they were kind of promising stuff and at the end it turns out that the company is is uh, is 
completely changing their industry and their and their and their platform and everybody who purchased that system is kind of getting left out what they had before it's not going to be the same it's not going to be usable and things like that so um what i want to get to is companies that don't provide any kind of uh, communication like a direct communication uh to to their customers they have a they have a very um, i believe they have uh, they have a customer base that is that is not confident in the abilities of the company they are not confident in in that they will get the actual things that that they were promised and when i was um I actually purchased that software and I'm suffering the same fate as everybody else, uh, probably asking for a refund that will never happen and things like that. But anyway, what I wanted to get to is when I was promoted to, I was the community manager managing the Facebook community and doing other stuff, trainings and things like that. Um, I was promoted to manage the softwares and the manager uh, manage the different development of the software. Um, I was asked if I want to kind of continue doing the, the Q&As and I said that I don't have any plans to discontinue Q&As for now because this communication between you guys and, and any kind of touch with a company is much more valuable, I believe, than if you just put up a roadmap and have an update every two weeks um, because people want to be told that they made a good decision, they made a good investment. And that's also when I'm buying things, that's also probably when you're buying things. And I believe that every company should have a and a like this because um, this type of support, you can ask anything really, you will get a, a human answer, not a bot, not a not a, f a templated answer, but you, you will have a real communication and that's 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 valuable i don't know if you if you use any kind of other software or any kind of other service and they do this but i'm very confident that if they do you you feel more strongly more more comfortably with that company so um i just wanted to point things out that are not obvious um if if you are selling something it would be a good idea if you if you do any kind of um uh, ongoing support just because you want to do it, just because you you want to provide some more feedback to your customers. Um, so, yeah, let's just see. There was a couple of more questions jumped in here. Hey, David, hope you're having an amazing day. Thank you very much. I am. Will GroovePages Global Blocks? I know it's a future feature. Be available on Groove Blocks or brands remain consistent? Alistair, that's a great, uh, great question, and I don't have a an idea about the technology behind it. I would really want to have it, but I don't think it's going to happen because what we do in Groove Pages is a is a different builder. It's kind of a builder that manages um, that manages blocks. It, it's a block builder. You basically construct your um, your content using blocks like Legos. But in Groove Blog, you it's a it's a quill uh, quill editor. That's what they call it. It's like a text editor, and they don't have these visual block type of things. It's just the software and the, and the technology was made differently. We may have some sort of solution where you embed the different different things from your Groove Pages site. I just don't have an answer for you right now because that's something that we didn't yet uh, kind of dive into. We didn't talk about that with, with the devs. But um, I do think that um, that it may be possible, but maybe further down the line. What I see happening before we actually do any kind of block implementation is, is just the things that we are adding into Groove Member version 2 right now, like the different sections, for example, a download box or a, or an important box or a button or a, a specific video element where it's going to allow you to upload uh, videos or, or put in a YouTube URL and things like that. So the things that we're doing in Groove Member, that's going to be also coming to Groove Blog uh, very soon. So uh the groove member and groove blog have the same kind of what we call a quill editor the quill builder it's not using these pre-made blocks like groove cart page builder and the groove pages page builder but it's going to be uh 
<laughs> it's going to be a different different type of, of thing, but we may do some kind of embedding or any kind of communications between these two types of build in the future that needs to be explored though. Um, Okie dokie, let's just say. Uh, how can you change the size of pop-up box and add email first name, last name? Um, change the pop-up box. Uh, by the way, that's coming as well. Um, for this one, I would I would say wait for a couple more days. We are releasing a full-on change with the designing of pop-ups. We are removing that ugly sidebar on the on the right-hand side that you see with the wireframe uh, pop-up designs. We're putting in a full-on uh, full-on system where you can just drag in a different pop-up blocks. And we have our designers created, I don't know, like 20, 30, 40, 50. I don't even know how many, but a bunch of these pop-ups. Um, and you'll be able to kind of uh, use them there. So uh, for this one, I believe you will have more uh, more success and options in the, the next couple of days. Let me just see if I have... Um, I believe I closed it already. Let me just reopen it. The pre-prod server open just to show you how it looks like. So when you go into pop-ups and you're going to add a pop-up, you're going to have the template options. Um, not quite sure if this is staying or not, but uh, you will be able to kind of add on templates. And the templates will either come in on that template um template view or they will be served as blocks so as what we have designer blocks or direct response blocks and things like that this is what you're going to see soon uh, as pop-ups and what you'll be able to do is just drag out the block on the pop-up okay so this is going to allow you to have the nicely designed pop-ups on on the pop-up canvas now here in the pop-ups in the settings, you'll be also able to set up the pop-up width just by typing in how wide you want the pop-up to show. Um, and that may be the thing that you are also looking for, change the side of the pop-up box. Uh, but that's going to be um, fully tied in with the actual size of the pop-up. Let me just see if I can show you some of our cool pop-up designs. Let me just log in here um that our team have have done i don't know why i share so many so many things with you like there, there will be announcements and and i really like to see oh my god i didn't know if that you were working on this but <laughs> i'm just super excited i cannot keep my mouth shut when when i'm showing you all of this stuff that we are working on Okay, so what you're seeing right now is the list of the different pop-ups that we, uh, our designers are uh, working on, and we have uh, kind of categorized them into different sections. So these are the pop-ups that you'll you'll kind of get your hands on uh, very soon. These are abandoned cart pop-ups and newsletter uh, sign-up pop-ups and things like that. So all of this, as you can see, this one is is uh, narrower or uh, yeah, this one is smaller than this pop-up. So this is going to completely depend on the design that you are using. But in case you're using something um, something custom, you, you will be able to manage the actual um, sizing of those pop-ups. For example, later on when you, when you come in and decide I want to use this pop-up, um, you can just duplicate these sections and just change this to... I don't know, name or last name or first name and things like that. So it's going to be super simple. So that's coming next week. Uh, that's going to be my answer for now. Okay, dokey. let's just say, um, David, that is why you are a pivotal part of group. Thank you very much. I agree. Um, it's very important for, for communication. I love Q&A because you explain things in plain English and makes me more confident with my purchase of group lifetime. There we go. That's what I'm telling you. Um, and I've seen also somebody that understands me. So you're saying got to be careful with software on AppSumo. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, yeah, so when you buy into software, you're buying also in the in the ability for the for, for the workers of those, or basically when you're buying anything, you're, um, you're buying into the 
to the team, you're buying the, the ability of the management to manage the company, you're buying into the, uh, to the mindset and the vision. And it's much more than just giving money for something that they give you and you play with it immediately. It's, it's, a, it's a longer term, mostly software, but there is also like training is the same way. Like, for example, when you're thinking about buying a, a training from somebody, just have a look if they actually do want to sell you something and get rid of you, or if they do kind of continue support, and that's going to show you if they care or not. Um, David, you're a rock star. This is needed more than Groove than, <laughs> with Groove than any other software with there being so much to learn. We appreciate and, uh, you and all you do. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, David. Thank you, guys. Thank you for being here. Um, I, I really appreciate these comments, and and I I, I know that uh, my Q and A's mean a lot to you, but but I I can I can tell you that your questions mean a lot to us because uh, you are the people that we are developing this for, and you are the people that are developing this with us. Um, if we would have um, we would have different customers uh, from you, I'm confident that Groove would be would be kind of pivoting in a different direction. Uh, with the feedback that you're providing us on our support uh, channels, on our feedback uh, feedback portals in our community, we're kind of um, able to go and fit the needs of our customers, and that's why we we are proud with this um, with this kickstart a lifetime deal campaign i can tell you immediately that we will have uh we will have a customer base that is much more willing to to kind of let's just say play with us in the future when we do anything else when we decide that we want to go in a I don't know when we want to go in a in the creative creative businesses of, of developing software for the people that draw, for example. Uh, people will be will be much willing to participate because they know how we did, how, how we did things that we are listening to the feedback we're adding on these things and it's just a, a progress. So yeah, I don't want to move. I don't want to talk anything uh, anything longer than that. Uh, your feedback is really appreciated. I, we don't tell you that. Uh, a lot, but it, it really is. Uh, you are creating our software as much as we are by just using it and telling us what what to do, what you don't like, what you what you like, and just kind of joining our Q and A's to communicate. So that's it. Thank you one more time for being here. We're doing another Q and A again on Tuesday. I appreciate you being here. Hopefully, see you on the next one. And until then, I wish you a pleasant rest of the day and good day, good night for everybody and. Yeah, happy weekend as well. See you next time. Bye-bye.